Hello, everybody. My name is Brent Thomas Colby. <laughs> that was really loud. My <laughs> name is Steven Salmon, just like the fish. You are listening to the Fusion Children's Ministry podcast, and today we're talking about... If you can still hear if your ears aren't bleeding. And I'm excited because this is one of the hardest things to do today. Yeah, it is really tough. It's talking about how to fire volunteers. What? Fire volunteers, Stephen? Yeah. Why would someone ever want to fire a volunteer? Uh, lots of reasons, but you know, today's episode, as always, is not sponsored by Purell because we're talking about you know, getting rid of the stuff that was bad. <laughs> Sometimes you just need a little bit of Purell and keep it clean, keep it classy. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this one, oh, it expired in February of last year, one year ago today. Okay, perfect, yeah. yeah perfect. So um, I do have something awesome for you. Okay. Uh, this is the YouTube channel called How To Dad. Fusion Ministry Podcast? Um, oh no, it's not that, it's a different one. Oh, okay. <laughs> How to Dad, awesome one, so. it's a YouTube channel, How and to Dad. he has a bunch of series. Here's his latest okay. uh, installment of How to Dad, and this video is titled, How to Wash a Car with a Baby. Oh, and perfect. I just want to show you a few highlights here. I think you'll enjoy it. Not I, married, don't have a baby, so this is going to be funny. You can take some notes here. This is perfect. good. You'll know all about this. Mm. Here he is. Okay. Right. Pete just asked them to do it. You know, they love this kind of stuff. He's Australian. Australian. I think he's actually from New Zealand. All right, you're gonna oh, wash the car he's now? not wearing shoes. He yeah. is from New Zealand. <laughs> you pointed that out to us before, mm -hmm. I think. So there's his adorable daughter. Um, and he's just sitting in, oh gosh. Wow. Nice. Yeah. No. No, 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 no. His pocket <laughs> broke. Mr. Spot just there. Get that bit? Yeah. I in here. <laughs> So awesome. How to dad. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. He has a, a yeah. bunch of other very helpful videos, uh, how to take a baby on an airplane, how to get your baby to wash, to clean the house, um, how to get, how to uh, dispose of a Christmas tree. Just really practical how dad stuff. How do you stuff. get a baby to clean the nursery? Ooh, that's a good At question. Church. We may need to uh, send him a request video for what's up next. I think this guy might be brilliant. So Stephen, have you ever had to fire a volunteer before? Yes. Okay. Now. Uh, what do you do? Where do you even begin? Because it's awkward, right? Because they're giving you something for free and you're essentially saying, I don't want that anymore. That's a hard conversation. It takes a long time to get there, I think. And, you know, it takes a lot of prayer and thinking about it. And But at the end of the day, you have to look at, and I know I've said this before, but what is best for your kids? And when that person is no longer providing something that is best for the kids, either safety thing or an attitude thing or whatever it might be you just you have to go in there and 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 fix that because you can't have something that is I don't know toxic or um, just not working right and uh, have a have a problem you can't set yourself up or your ministry for that right so okay so when you look at it from scratch some of us are caught up in a process where we have a volunteer we know it's not a right fit we okay. have to have that critical conversation yes but for those of us who aren't there yet is there anything we can do before we get there to help us hopefully, make that easier hopefully you started from the very beginning i think because if you've prefaced like i meet with every potential volunteer who will ever come and serve in in kids on the ridge meet with all of them make sure they're not I'm getting weird vibes or you know right. they don't have a third eyeball in the middle of their head or and anything And they're doing like a background that. check and you're having yeah, references background so check. after all that. Oh yeah. So they, they come and meet with me and um, we go over kind of the expectations, job description, what they're going to be doing and we go over what happens if it's not working out. That's okay. what we call it. What happens if it's not working out? And you're just like, here's one thing I need to tell you about. If this <laughs> doesn't work out, just flick it out a little bit. Just is that just a, is this subliminal? Yeah. Subliminal That's cue? it. That's it. Just start doing this mm -hmm. every time just you talk the, about it. You just get the smell in the room and everything. That you makes, know. That's good. But no, and I think if you make that clear from the beginning, when you approach that person later, they go, Hey, you know what? I get it. And usually, in my experience, is if you've gotten to the point where you got the fire volunteer they are not having a good time doing whatever yeah, it is that good. they're doing. And so they know it. And so it's not like it's this big, like, oh, well, you know, kind of thing. I, we, we're really afraid of that happening, but I've, that's never, I've never had that happen in my experience. Yeah. I've never had someone just really have like a meltdown or get upset over it. Usually they're like, 
oh, thank goodness, because I've just been like, this has been awful. Right. <laughs> it's mutual. What has taken you so long? So you mentioned the job description. Mm -hmm. I have found for people, if you have to ask them to stop serving in that area, it's helpful to have a very clear job description. Because yes. nine out of 10 times, they'll pick it up. They know it's not working. Yeah. But for that 10th person, you have to show them like, look, here's what we're asking of you. Here's the skill. Like this is not, this is not describe right. you or what you've right. been doing. And for those people, it helps paint a clear picture. Yeah. Because the thing about anything, if you approached any sort of meeting or any sort of uh, talk with someone and all you had was feelings, right? That's very not. That's not clear. It's yeah. very weird. People are like, well, I didn't have that feeling. I wasn't. You know, I. It's just when you can go there with facts and go, here's exactly what's going on. So much simpler. Yeah. So much simpler. Yeah. Okay, so include a process for a transition in your orientation. Mm -hmm, yes. Uh, be able to show them why it doesn't fit, have some sort of empirical, some sort of black and yeah. white in the job script, something to make it clear yeah. to them. Any professional organization will have that. I think another way to help to fire a volunteer is to redirect them to serve someplace where they do fit. It's classic. It's very rarely do you have someone that's just a total no-go. Often, they're just in the wrong spot. Yeah. So, and again, it goes back to that. Most of the time when you bring it up, they're gonna be thrilled to have that conversation with you. Yeah. Um, maybe they're not loving the check-in team or with the fifth grade, wherever they're at, and they're mm -hmm. gonna love, they wanna serve, which is why they came to you, yep. um, but they don't love where they're at. So right. just finding another place to them, even a different ministry, that's a that's a win too for them and for the yeah, church. Yeah, don't, don't get so caught up in like, this person can't serve that you take away the opportunity for them forever, but instead go, okay, every part of the bot there's a part of everything like it takes it takes everyone so where what talents what gifts do they have and how can i prompt them or or show them that hey maybe this is a better spot yeah this is a better fit yeah. yeah cool what else you got um i would say be uh just really clear like you said and then um if you know it's going to be bad if it's going to just be awful and you're just not looking forward to it get your pastor, your leader, or whoever the authority above you is on board, let them know what's going on so you can just have some protection, spiritual covering, people could be praying for you, make sure you're praying a lot, and um, and do it that way, even maybe, you know, bring bring them with. Yeah. I think, I think that's in the Bible. Yeah, I think so. I had an instance when I was first serving as a children's pastor for the first time, had this family that totally just, for whatever reason, they got totally upset and just Were flipped. they grandfathered in? Did you uh, recruit them or were they already there when you, when no, you showed up? I, they came to the church as I was there, so they weren't there before me. They they came. Right, but when I, you came on, were they already volunteering no, in no. the area? Oh, okay. They okay. came in. Okay. Um, but man, something happened and they were just ticked. And oh. I got my pastor in right away. I said, hey, this oh, family's man. ticked. I've been working with them. I was doing everything I knew what to do. Sure. You know, and um, they got upset. And because I gave my pastor a heads up when they went to him, mm -hmm. um, he was awesome about it. He backed me up 110%. Nice. But I made that easy for him to do sure. because he was in on that conversation from day one. Yeah. And nice. if I had waited, you know, to bring him in, right, it right, would have right. been. He wasn't the lead pastor. He was just the pastor overseeing me in that role too. So yeah. uh, it was great. Um, so Stephen, sometimes if any of those uh, five ideas don't work, you can always try a few breakup lines. I downloaded <laughs> a few for you. I'm going to try them on you. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Number one. Great. Can we get a drum roll, please? Okay, perfect. Sounds good. <clears throat> is it hot? Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> is it hot in here or is this yes. relationship suffocating me? That's good. Do we have a laugh? A laugh? Okay, so good. Here we go. So good. Uh, Number two. <clears throat> Roses are red, violets are blue, Can garbage is dumped, and so are you. That's good. I think oh, that'll work. Evolve, it'll be clear. Oh, Your volunteers man. will get that. Uh, here's you the last no one. one to serve with you ever again. <laughs> here's the last one. If none of those five steps work and you need to dump a volunteer, try this line out. <clears throat> I wish I could say you were the most special person in the world, but you're not. That's it. Keep it simple. Keep it clear. You oh, don't need man. to mix words. Oh man. I I guess yeah. Those those are. If you if you have the courage to actually use those when talking to somebody and you're like getting them serving somewhere else or having telling them, let us know in the comments below because we want to hear that story. We'd love to talk to you about it because that just would blow my mind <laughs> that anyone would be able to use those. But 
Hey, yeah, I guess if those five ways don't work, you got you got three awesome pickup line or breakup lines here from from Brent. So. Yep. I am Brent Colby. And I'm Stephen Salmon, and, and this is the Fusion Ministry Podcast. We'll see you next time. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. I got my finger guts. Thank you.